Hi, my name is John from Final Cut Pro Classes, and today's tutorial is really exciting. It's about how to use the transform tool and how to keyframe in the transform tool, which means you can make everything move. And once you know how to keyframe in the transform tool, you can keyframe in a lot of things, all the effects and a lot of other things in Final Cut Pro. So let's get started. It's super easy. People tend to overthink it, but I'm going to show you an easy way to do it. So first I made myself a random timeline as usual because it doesn't matter what the footage is, it just matters that you know how to use the tool. So this timeline is 1920 by 1080 and I put a picture on top of a video that doesn't quite fill the frame because it's a different size. So if I want this to fill the frame, that is a good tool to use would be the transform tool. So if I click on the clip itself, and I click the transform tool here, you can see that there's a bounding box that goes around the picture. Now I'm at 25%. If I was at fit, I can't grab the corner of that bounding box so easy and I like to be able to see the whole bounding box when I'm moving. So I'm gonna make this 25% so I can see the whole bounding box. If I pull the corners out, I can see that the controls in the inspector here all move because these are the same controls in the inspector as when you're changing the bounding box. If I move the position, I can see that the position controls are moving. So basically with the transform tool, if I just want to reframe it and just leave it there, that's where it's going to be. So now that whole picture fills the frame and you don't see through the picture. But let's say that I want this picture to zoom in. Okay, I'm going to reset everything. So I'm going to get rid of what I did. If I go to the transform and I just drop this menu down and say reset perimeter, it puts the picture back to where it was. So now I want to do something different. I'm going to start the beginning of the clip. I'm going to hit my up arrow key and I'm going to fill the frame and I'm going to pull it down a little bit. And let's say that I want to start here, but I want to zoom in on them. So if I want to start here, I have to have Final Cut remember that I want the picture here at this point in time where my playhead is. And that's when I hit this yellow keyframe. And as soon as I hit this yellow keyframe, you can see keyframes pop up everywhere here. So Final Cut remembers where the position of the picture is supposed to be at this point in time. Now, if I don't move the playhead, I can still adjust it because I'm still adjusting that one keyframe. So now all you have to do is move the playhead to somewhere else and you don't have to hit the keyframe again because it will make the next keyframes itself. So as I pull the picture out, let's say to there, and I pull it down, that's where my next keyframe will be. So the first keyframe starts at almost full frame and the second keyframe ends up here. So if I drag my playhead back, I can see that this does a zoom in. So that's a simple keyframing task right there. Now if I move the picture again, it'll make more keyframes. So here, if I move it here, now it's going to drift to the right after it hits that other keyframe. So basically, once you make the first keyframe, Final Cut will make all the other keyframes by itself if you change the playhead position and you change the position of the picture. So I'm going to reset that for a second. I'm going to go here to the transform and say reset, and that gets rid of all the keyframes I put in there. Now I just have my regular picture. So let's say, for instance, at this point in time, I want this picture to be off the frame, okay? So I hit the keyframe here and Final Cut remembers that up until here, the picture has to be off the frame. Now, all I gotta do is move my playhead to somewhere else. And let's say by the time the video gets to this point in time, I want my picture to be on the other side. So it has to drift across. So it made a keyframe to do that. So if I drag through, I can now see that that's exactly what my picture does. It goes across the frame. Now let me reset that again. So basically, once you make the first keyframe, Final Cut will make keyframes for you as you change the values and change the position of the playhead. So let's say, for instance, I wanna do something really crazy just to show you how keyframe works. So I'm gonna take this picture. I have no keyframes. I already reset the perimeter, which gets rid of all the keyframes and puts everything back into the frame and I grab this bounding box and I make it small and maybe I twist it a little bit and then I drag it here 
So I have my keyframe here. So I wanted to remember that before I hit the keyframe, I want to make sure my playhead is where I want it. So I want it here. So I'm going to click on the bounding box and I get the keyframe icon again. I hit that keyframe and you can see all keyframes go onto these controls. All I have to do is move the playhead to here and say I drag the box here. It will know to bring that box here by the time the playhead gets to here. I can move the playhead again and then just do something else. I can go here and you can see the pathway is developing here. So every move I make is being remembered by Final Cut. And I'm going to do one more. I'm going to drag it here. By the time my playhead gets to here, I want the box to be here and maybe have spun around three times. That's exactly what that box is going to do now. So if I drag through it, I can see it goes there, it goes there, and it spins around. So that is the power of keyframing. Now let's reset everything again. And let's go to some video this time. So I'm going to delete this clip for now. And I'm going to go to this bottom clip here. So let's say I want to zoom in on this shot here. So again, I'm going to put my playhead where I want to start that zoom. I'm going to click the shot. I get the bounding box because the, the transform tool is already clicked. And I want to start here. So I click the keyframe. So Final Cut remembers to start here. Nothing's going to happen from here to here. It'll just stay the same until it hits this keyframe and I change something. So all I have to do now is move the playhead and change the size of the shot and reframe it. And that's exactly what that's going to do. And then it will stop here because there's only two keyframes. So if I drag through the shot, you can see that it does exactly what I want it to do. Now, a lot of times you want to adjust the keyframes. Like let's say that maybe it zooms too slow. If I play it, I can see, oh, maybe that's a slow zoom. I want to speed that up, but I like the position. So now you can, if you right click on the clip, you can say show video animation. And this will actually show you your keyframes here. So these are the two keyframes you made. I can grab that keyframe and drag it closer to the other keyframe, which will make it a faster zoom in, but the position will be the same. So if I drag through this, you can see now the zoom is much faster because it takes less time to get to those values. And like I said, if you move the playhead to somewhere else, and now you could actually, with this video animation open, you can actually see the keyframes being made. If I move the video playhead to here, and I, I move this over here, you can see it made a keyframe on position. So that's exactly what that's going to do here. It's going to go from here, and then it's going to drift off to that other keyframe just like I told it to. If I want to get rid of a keyframe, just one of them, I can click it on and right click it and say delete keyframe. So now the position goes back to this keyframe to where I originally had it. So now I'm going to get rid of all these keyframes. I'm going to go here to the inspector, drop down the little arrow and say reset perimeter. You can see all the keyframes disappear here. So remember we have the video animation open. So right now it's closed. So let me show you how to do a movement and hold that movement and then do another movement. That's the only time you have to hit a keyframe and then move the playhead. So let's say I would like to start zooming in on this shot here. So I hit the keyframe because I know that I want it to start here. So then I move the playhead and I pull it out to here. And I want it to hold here for a while before I zoom out. So here I'm going to move the playhead to here and here's where I manually have to hit a keyframe in order to hold that position and then move away from it. So if I click on the shot, I get the keyframe icon. I hit that keyframe, but I don't do anything. And then I move the playhead away from it. And then I can do something with the shot. Now I can't see my bounding box so good, so I'm going to make this even smaller. So now I see my whole bounding box. And I want to put it back to, say, this position. So between those two keyframes, when I hit that one manually, that position is going to hold. And if I open up the video animation, I can see my keyframes are here. And here's the one I hit manually, and then I moved away from it. So when I hit a keyframe manually, it takes the value from this one, unless I do something. So basically, I hit it manually, 
and then I moved away and I did another move. So if I drag through this, I can see it zooms up there, it holds, and then I zoom down again, and it holds because there's no other keyframes after that. So let's do that one more time just so you get that. I'm gonna reset the perimeter and get rid of all those keyframes. Okay, all those keyframes are gone. And I'm gonna close this window here, hide video animation. And let's just do that one more time so you understand that. So actually I'm gonna open up the video animation window so you can see the keyframes being made. So here, I click on the shot. I have my transform tool on. I'm gonna to make this a little bit bigger, 25%. And I want the shot to, to start there. So I click it inside the bounding box. I hit my keyframe. Then I move my playhead to somewhere else and I blow it up. So you see, I didn't have to hit a keyframe when I moved the playhead because I was changing the value. But now I want the value to stay where it is for a while before I make another move. So I move the playhead and here's where I manually have to hit a keyframe and then move away from it. So I click on the picture, I get the keyframe and I hit it and that keyframe appears here. It takes the same value as this keyframe because that was the last keyframe. But now I don't do anything and I move away from it. And here's where I can change the value and it won't affect this keyframe here. So I can't reach the bounding box. I can always go to the scale all. It's the same control until I get the bounding box back and I can put it back to where I want it. So I say just roughly I want it there. So if I drag through the, the picture, I can see that here I zoom in just like I told it. And then I go to this keyframe where I hit it manually, but I didn't change anything. But then I moved the playhead and I made another keyframe over here. So basically that's how you can change the frame of the picture and do a lot of things with keyframing in the transform tool. I hope you enjoyed that video and I'm going to do more about keyframing in the next few tutorials. Thank you for watching. Like or subscribe if you want and see you soon.